So you have an arm bar. Uh, I'll show a couple of options that you have here. First of all, I usually don't cross my ankles unless he's messing with the ankles. Meaning, if he starts doing this kind of stuff, definitely, absolutely, before he gets there, you know, if he's targeting, trying to peel off something, I'm going to cross them. Uh, but, you know, usually I don't bother. It's not a bad idea, but you lose when, once you cross it. You can see that my knees are now pointing to the side, so you lose a little bit of downward pressure. It's easier for him to explode. Here, you really got stronger downward pressure, but it's a little bit more open, so you compromise. Like I said, the easiest way to do it is keep the downward pressure heavy. If he starts messing with the ankles there, you know, change, change the position into a locking position, it should be good. Okay? We're going to talk about uh, different you know, opportunities here that you have in the arm bar to finish the arm bar in a different way. We're not going to approach how to break this here, because that's a class in itself. Um, so, First option here is the wrist lock. Wrist lock is, a, is an option that usually goes unnoticed and it's one of the easiest ways, even when the guy is defending, to, to get the situation here to finish the fight without having to accomplish the extension of the arm. So the wrist lock, you can do it on either side, but I'll show first on the arm that I'm attacking then I'll show the other one. So regardless of what grip he's using, I'm going to glue my chest to that elbow. And this is very important so that when I apply pressure on the wrist, that arm is locked, it doesn't go anywhere. Now, I'm going to target the wrist that I want, in this case, it's this wrist here. If he has this position, which is a very tight lock for him, it's a good thing to do. What I'll do is that I'll bring pressure on top, and I'll create a little frame here, almost like a figure four frame. Okay? And I don't want to start with the end, which is this here. I want to start sideways. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to start this way, so I'm trying to tilt the hand sideways. So here, apply pressure, and this will peel it off as I peel it off, I can switch to what I want, which is this here in Portuguese, Mojo Vaca, like, translates to cow's hoof. Uh, it's this kind of uh, wrist lock here. And now it's all supported, you just apply a little pressure and it's gone. So you're right here, you got this arm in, you're going to go with this hand towards the blade of his hand, support your wrist here, apply pressure to peel it off. Once you peel it off, it's easier to manipulate this into a regular band. Apply a little bit of pressure. Don't apply much pressure because this is unpleasant as hell. Okay, it's Chad Curry's thing, so we always <laughs> identify the guys that like doing the different techniques here. So here, nobody likes the the wrist lock guy. Okay, nobody likes the wrist lock guy. So it's one of those things. If you're good at this here, everybody's gonna hate rolling with you because no matter how strong you are, wrist locks tend to force you to tap very fast. Usually the bigger guys just tap like children when it comes to wrist locks or ankle locks. So here, here, and here, okay? Now if you want to go fancy, I want to do the other side here. If he's doing this lock, it's very easy. You just support that wrist, so now I'm supporting the backhand of things, and now I approach and I grab this elbow like that. So it doesn't take much there, you can see. So all I did was Oh, maybe I'm trying the first ankle uh, wrist lock and he's being stubborn in there, you know, and then you just apply pressure there. So all I'm doing is the inverted situation. So I'm supporting that band that already existed with my chest and I'm applying pressure with both hands against the elbow. So back in there. Okay, number one, easy. Number two, just glue right here, pressure there. Okay, just as easy. If he is holding like that, whatever, whichever way, it makes my life much easier. So I don't have to screw around much. It's just pressure there and tap. You can see that at this point here, he has one or two options. He taps around the wrist lock or he unlocks quickly and tries to extend, which means I'm gonna have to convert that wrist lock if I want to in an arm bar. But so if he tries to extend there, to, you know, now it's a bad angle for me to wrist lock. It's a good angle for me to continue with that rotation to get to the arm bar. Let's start with those wrist locks from the arm bar. We're going to go into something that's a little bit more complicated.